But on the phone, we have a uh, actual uh, reporter from the liberal media, as if uh, there's a difference between the liberal media and the other liberal media, which is the rest of the media. And uh, he works for uh, uh, Huffington Post. Uh, Ryan Grimm, you're like what? Like the head of uh, like uh, just like all the reporters there or at the Huffington Post? My, my actual title is Hold on for one second. Uh, new dork is screwed up. Hold on for one second. Okay. Uh, you're the, I was asking the question again. You are the, um, you're what? Like the, the chief reporter, right? Chief, chief Ken Ken and Ken Troller. Okay, yeah, that's funny. Oh, see, look at him. see, it's yeah, perfect okay. because that actually, um, you know, that attitude, which is like uh, reporters are supposed to be uh, more less biased than that, but apparently you're not. Um, let me ask you this question: it's not then. a bias. It's, I'm, I'm objective about it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, like, I guess this is like that sort of left wing speech. Like you're just jamming it down our throats, right? Every, out of the game. Everything is a. Uh, Everything is like, um, you know, like a, like a, a immediately a confrontation. That's part of the reason why I think people are upset at you guys. But let me ask you this. As a member of the media, uh, you must be uh, really butthurt after the, uh, the debate the other night, right? Because uh, you guys were really exposed. Yeah, the, uh, Ted Cruz really gave it to us. That's right. He did. In, uh, in fact, he, uh, all of them did. He, he, was, he was asked whether or not he would support legislation that was currently before the Senate uh, you know, that, that had to do with the budget and future spending levels. And he very rightly uh, refused to answer that question and declared it to be one of those, one of those gotcha questions that, you know, you're trying to make everybody look like Sarah Palin. Uh, and, he, you know, he turned it around. And, you know, who, who, you know, who, does, he, uh, you know, who does he think the media is asking him to uh, you know, predict how he's going to vote on future legislation? Oh, hold on. Can I just say one thing? This is amazing because this is like a perfect example, I think, of why people have a problem with the media. I ask you a question about whether or not your butt hurt from when you got so uh, reamed at this debate. You immediately change the topic to make it a gotcha against a Republican. Like, what is what? How does that work in your head? I, I hey, you're right. You got you got me. All right. I mean, at least you're big enough to admit it, that you just change the subject. Like, that's the right. way that they do it. So, all right. Will you concede, all right, here on, uh, you know, uh, f for everybody to hear that, I mean, you can just say, like, all right, we, we always pick on Republicans or conservatives, period. Always. Always. Okay. All right. Well, wow, uh, that's like shocking. Honesty. All right. So let me ask you this then. And I'm not saying, obviously, you work for a liberal media outlet, okay, uh, where, you know, uh, I don't know if like Ariana Huffington flies you to her, your office uh, in her jet on her way to a climate change meeting or not, but um, you don't work at uh, CNBC. So maybe you can tell us, when did the CNBC become the Communist News Broadcast Committee? Yeah, it, it was quite surprising. You know, they they, they really uh, came with some substantive questions, and then they had the audacity to to follow up when uh, when the candidates kind of tried to drift away from the facts. And I think it's telling that the uh, that that the crowd was uh, and and not just the crowd in the building, but uh, you know the the crowd and your listeners were you know so so quick to condemn the media. How? How dare you challenge Ben Carson on his facts on, of, of math? If Ben Carson says the math adds up, then gosh darn it, you know, the, the math adds up. Can I just ask one quick question? Hold like, on. Scott yeah. has a question for you. Why do you guys, like, the hatred for the Reverend Dr. Ben Carson is amazing? Like, is it because he's more authentically black than Barack Obama and that makes you uncomfortable? Like... Why do you hate him so much? And why shouldn't he be allowed to, like, give a speech to a tree bark company? I mean, he, you know, he, he is clearly a very gifted neurosurgeon. Uh, but, you know, it uh, doesn't mean you can't challenge him on his, on his math. He says that, uh, you know, his 10% his across the board uh, tax is going to be what he, what he brings forward. And they, they did a quick little uh, math. I'm, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. First off. I'm pretty sure he said 15%. All 
okay, or well, close to it. He said close to 15%, somewhere did, between yeah, yeah. 10 he and 15%. Under, under questioning, he, he, he raised taxes. Just, He's doing the same thing. Just amazing. It's like He's uncanny. Okay. That's the biggest, that's the biggest tax hike uh, in modern American history that he just delivered right there on stage from 10 to 15%. Oh, my God. Well, then you must have loved that. Yeah, yeah, so all right. right. Yeah. Cheering in the Huff Post office. Now, let me ask you this. Don't you think it's a bit of a stereotype to say that uh, that you're questioning whether or not uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend Carson can do math? Because you're sort of claiming that like black people can't man. do math or something man. like that? Man. I mean, isn't man. that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? I think the stereotype is that men are good at math and women aren't. And I think that's the one you're looking for. Well, so Larry, Larry Summers, your, your favorite uh, White House Democrat is the one that kind of propagated that when he was the... I don't uh, like the Harvard fact that he worked for Obama, but I think he had it right when he was talking about girls at uh, when he was working at Harvard. Well, well, why can't, well, I mean, Ryan, you would know this because I, you are, I guess they would call it transgender and whatnot or whatever. I know you think you had the operation. So did you do better math as a girl or what you are now? I've never been good at math, period. All right, so there okay. you have it. But 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 all of a sudden, he can say like that Dr. Ben Carson right. doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, that's fine. That's just weird. Hey, well, let, let's leave open the possibility he does know and he's just lying. Let, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He's a reverend oh, doctor. God, it's unbelievable. You can't even get through a conversation without like calling them liar, dumb, what else, hater, um, homophobic, what other insults. Like, what, what church is he uh, reverend at? Uh, well, it's not, you know, I don't think why it's really appropriate to question his religion. Now, all of a sudden, you want to have it be, like, categorized. Like, right. maybe maybe if you're religious, you should have a serial number stamped on you or something, huh? I can't, I can't <laughs> help but wonder, if he was a Muslim, whether or not you'd even ask a question like that. Right? I and think if you, if, if, uh... It's unbelievable. Maybe we should build him a mosque uh, with my tax mosque? dollars, right? Yeah. All right. Uh... You're right. You guys got me again. All right. Well, okay. So since you come from the Huffington Post and uh, clearly, you know, sort of more pro, let's say, Denmark or Norway than you are America, um, which Republican candidate makes you the most scared? I, I, don't, I don't think any of these guys are, are scaring anybody, really. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, I mean, Marco Rubio is the one that the Democrats all claim to be scared of, but the the, the uniformity of of their their proclaimed fear ought to suggest that there's uh, that there's something a little bit brer rabbit to it. Uh, I I don't quite. I think that you Republicans have think you've kind of. There's a problem with you guys. You don't speak normal language. Like you're so in your towers. Of like liberal elitism that you know, I mean, Brad you would Rabbit. pay. What are you talking about? You would pay to not have Hillary Clinton debate Carly Fiorina. That has to make you. Oh my god! The you know whatever you do it in your pants after the operation. I I remember twenty twelve oh eight every four years the entire Republican base works itself up into a frenzy about just how badly its candidate is going to destroy the democrat in the debate it's fascinating because democrats don't actually do that they don't they don't fantasize about debates that are upcoming months and months and months uh in advance i wonder if, if that does tell you something about the differences between the two parties but yeah the Republicans democrats are like scared are one you know you guys you guys are you just have it figured out and as soon as you get somebody up there on stage who's going to tell it to the american people everybody's going to say oh yeah, you're right. I hadn't seen it that way. That I got news for you. Hold on for one like second. Fiorina tells it to me. Listen, you're right. If Carly Fiorina does half as good against Hillary Clinton as Mitt Romney did against Obama, then it's going to be a landslide. There are two reasons. I will tell you exactly two reasons why Mitt Romney did not win that election, even though he won virtually every debate. One reason, Black Panthers. Second reason, Candy Crowley. Okay, if you take two those two people or groups of people off the planet or just put them back to where they came from, all right, like Canada or whatever, Mexico, then Mitt Romney is probably now running for, well, I don't think he would have a third term, but it's possible. Uh, so let me ask you this. Why are you so angry? Hmm. <laughs> 
I, I'm not angry at all. I'm quite enjoying myself. All right. Uh, okay. Let me ask you this. Um, do you think now that uh, Bernie Sanders is doing so well against uh, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden is basically, my understanding is Joe Biden met with uh, Bernie Sanders the other day. And now uh, Joe Biden's not running, but Bernie Sanders is. Do you think that Bernie Sanders has to start worrying about, you know, like just his 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 like uh, his his safety, his personal safety, because he's running against the Clintons? Oh, is this kind of like uh, the murder conspiracy stuff? Well, I mean, you seem to know about it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm part of the part of the cover up. Uh, no, I I think that uh, uh, Bernie. Uh, probably doesn't need to worry about his 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 personal safety. Uh, but he should probably stay away from uh, Pox, right, in uh, Washington, D.C. Is that where those things go down? You tell me. I mean, you're you in D.C. Know. It's weird that you don't report on you're it. At the, you're at the Ariana Aromatherapy Emporium. We're not. <laughs> yes. It's, it, I mean, don't you think it's weird, though, that like there's been no reporting on this over almost 30 years? Uh, d- deeply, but uh, you know, Hillary is what thirty points up nationally on on Bernie. I I, I don't think she's going to resort resort to murder. Yeah, but how much of that is like just a function of like the spin that the media puts on it? Right. Who did? Who was it? Uh, Marco Rubio that said that the media are the uh, Democrats' super PAC. That was that was pretty clever. You got to give them that. Well, I mean, it's it's clever, but it's also true. I mean, because a super PAC, like say, has. I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars, but the media has even more than that. Would you not agree? Well, they're, com- they're, they're clearly independent because Hillary probably didn't appreciate the last several months' coverage of, our, of her emails. Oh, yeah, uh, so her uh, just kind of like the, walking the, all the over the Benghazi committee, the she, said, a little bit. she said nothing new at the hearing. She didn't say, all right, fine, I admit it, I was having a cup of hot cocoa watching uh, the terrorists I sent there with GoPros do their job. She didn't admit anything. And then everybody uh, made it like some big win for her. That's not a Democratic super PAC? I, uh, I was reading uh, Charles Krauthammer this morning. Uh, He's declaring cool. it a, a giant victory for Democrats, a uh, giant oh. loss for Republicans. Well, no, he makes mistakes sometimes. Look, I mean, the bottom line is everybody watch this, right? She's talking for 11 hours but doesn't say anything new. Isn't that weird? Uh, yes, so why, why was she there for 11 hours? Exactly! I would recommend you guys like, go she just Brown spent Hammer the whole time on. filibustering. She never said a single new thing during the entire investigation. Not a lot one of the members single uh, thing. took their entire time to question her to just talk themselves. Well, that's, n- you know, see, that's the thing. Is that the way to deflect. Okay, uh, so let me ask you this. You must love Bernie Sanders, because I know uh, that you wrote a book about getting high, and Bernie Sanders just said that everybody should smoke pot. Yeah, I think uh, my book clearly pushed him in that direction. So, so uh, yeah. I mean, don't you see that conflict so of wait, interest? N- now you Hold say- on for a second. It's just like he just admitted it. <laughs> You know what? You know what I love is that Bernie Sanders. First, he gets pushed around by black girls, and now he gets pushed around by a book. Could you imagine this guy negotiating with Putin? Oh my God! We've got a clip of Bernie Sanders that is just going to blow people away. That I think if 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 our enemies see this, forget it. It's over. ISIS will be marching down the streets of uh, they'll they'll like basically fly into Burlington uh, Vermont Airport and start their entire invasion from there. Um, Let me ask you this. Is that in an international airport? Oh, well, no. uh, it will be if they get a flight from uh, ISIS, yeah. from the caliphate. Uh, that's the whole point, is that if I, once ISIS the caliphate's there, they don't care if it's international or not. See, this is the thing that I think liberals don't understand. What that, kind of meals do they serve on ISIS air? They don't. Uh, well, <laughs> see, these you don't even get to ask those questions. You eat what they tell you to eat. That's the thing I think that liberals don't appreciate about that. This is a real enemy, not like a fake enemy. This is not like World War II. They don't this understand. is real. They don't understand that evil exists in the world. Like, they're not able to comprehend that. Do you agree that there's evil in the world? There's definitely evil. Okay. like No, not like Israel. Who, who do you think it is? Who do you think evil is I'll, in this? I'll, I'll go ahead and call ISIS evil. Let's go with that. Oh my Whoa. God! Uh, well, we would tell the press, we would stop the presses, but of course, um, you know, they probably won't report it because 
It's a liberal media. Um, right. So uh, let me ask you this. Like, um, what would you say? I mean, do you think it's possible that Hillary is just going to throw in the towel at this point? Uh, not yet. Uh, I think I think she's going to stick it out a little bit longer. As long as uh, her, you know, she's beating her primary opponent handily and and in head to head matchups against uh, the Republicans, I think she'll probably stick it out. Okay, one more question. Since you work in Washington, how completely uh, wrong is it that a that it's a uh, they just passed a budget deal at three a.m. in the morning? What's that about? Uh, that's you know you're lucky it wasn't during the lame duck. That's when the mischief happens. See Deflected, that? unbelievable. Um, and okay, so uh, are you guys really bummed in the uh, Ariana Huffington Post uh, offices that uh, Paul Ryan is now the Speaker of the House? Because I know how much you guys like to you know uh, mock him and malign him uh, and uh, whatnot, and just like claim that he's a real conservative when in fact he's actually pretty liberal i d- i will tell you that we're going to miss john boehner absolutely uh that guy was something else i bet i bet you would i mean that guy practically was ready to you know take up the shovel and start building moss with you guys i mean it's pathetic all hey, right one more question from scott so uh ryan uh would you say that you are uh, hate america or dislike america <laughs> um i n- neither of those you're going to deny that I would deny that. Unbelievable. Which, um, which, uh, which country, I mean, uh, so you don't think we should be like De- uh, Denmark? In other words, you disagree with Bernie Sanders. I've never been to Denmark. Really? Oh, well, that's, no. I mean. Pretty convenient. Has Bernie Sanders been there? Yet he wants to turn us into Denmark. He did a honeymoon in the Soviet Union. I know. Yeah. And you know what? He still hasn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, he got so burnt. All right, uh, (laughs) Ryan Grimm, uh, you've been a good sport, uh, and, you know... uh, Wicked awesome, Ryan. Thanks, Yeah, no, we appreciate you coming on, even though, you know, uh, I think to a certain extent, the uh, big part of the problems with this country are not just you, but you're responsible for it. Yeah, I hear that. But at the same time, like, I think we all need to, like, come together and just, like, be Americans. That's right. I mean, uh, maybe we could just stop the divisiveness and stop, you know, worrying about being so PC all the time. Wouldn't you agree? And just rally behind Trump. Well, I mean, don't you think that PC is a problem in this country? Like, we don't have the freedom of speech anymore? Uh, Yeah, and if you work for a big corporation, you probably can't, you don't have much freedom of speech there. And, man... I will agree with you on these uh, these these kids coming out of college today, uh, constantly trying to get speakers off the stage. That's kind of weird. Oh, it's totally weird. And uh, Bernie Sanders invited a Muslim girl on the one the other day. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's, we'll talk about that's it later. That's insane. Yeah. All right. Well, um, uh, Ryan Grimm, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you were a good sport, Ken. and um, you know, for whatever. Thanks, Ken. Okay, uh, it's uh, the deuce. <laughs> Uh, whatever. They're, it's like constantly, the it's unbelievable. It's, on, it's, it's all crazy. like snark. They, that's the way that they work. He's a reporter, and he still talks like that. It's just You know, it's like you don't even get upset anymore. No, like I don't. Doing- 